welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Jason's Bedtime Storytime and today I'm going to read Jack and the Beanstalk It's an English fairy tale and it's open source so anyone can read it and uh, yeah that's it really so uh, anyone can read it in a you know like a recording or a video and stuff like that because it's very very old just like my underpants so I'm going to read this book to you and you can just lie down listen and fall asleep so I'm going to read this story now so here we go there is once upon a time a poor widow who had only who had an only son named Jack and a cow named Milky White and all they had to live on was the milk the cow gave every morning which they carried to the market and sold But one morning, Milky White gave no milk, and they didn't know what to do. What shall we do? What shall we do? said the widow, wringing her hands. Wringing her, it must be very wet. She wrung her hands. Cheer up, Mama. I'll go and get work somewhere, said Jack. We've tried that before, and nobody would take you, said his mother. We must sell Milky White, and with the money, do something. Start shop or something. All right, Mother, said Jack. It's market day today, and I'll soon sell Milky White, and then we'll, we, we'll see what we can do. So he took the cow's halter in his hand, and off he starts. He hadn't gone far when he met a funny-looking old man who said to him, Good morning, Jack. Good morning to you, said Jack, and wondered how he knew his name. Well, Jack, and where are off you, off to today? Yeah, said the man. I'm going to the market to sell our cow, our cow, uh, for my mum, and we're going to sell it. And when we get the money, are we going to open a shop or, or, or you know, something like that? Oh, you look the proper sort of chap to sell cows," said the man. I wonder if you know how many beans make five. Two in each hand and one in your mouth, says Jack, as sharp as a needle. What? said the man. That doesn't even make sense. Two in each hand and one in your mouth. What a ridiculous answer. 
Well, I don't know why you think it's ridiculous. I thought it was quite clever, said Jack. Oh, it's not, though, is it? said the man. It's... It's a really silly, really silly answer. No, but... Uh, you see, because you've got two hands, and you, it's, there's five beans, and two in each hand, and you've got to have somewhere else to put the other one. And as this is a children's story, can't put it up my bum, can I? So I put it in my mouth. Ah, oh, right you are, said the man. And here are the very beans themselves. He went on, pulling out of his pocket a number of strange-looking beans. Ah, you... as you are... ah, oh, yeah, you... Sorry? said Jack. Oh, it's okay, uh, just remembering a time when I was a pirate. Oh, anyway, as you are so sharp, said he, I don't mind doing a swap with you, your cow, for these beans. Walker, said Jack, wouldn't you like it? Oh, you don't know what these beans are, said the man. If you plant them overnight, by morning they grow up to the sky. Really? said Jack. You don't say so. Yes, that is so, and if it doesn't turn out to be true, you can have your cow back. Right, said Jack. That does it. I mean, when you first told me about the idea and the offer, I thought, that's ridiculous, because it's a cow. I'm going to swap a cow for some, some smelly beans. It's been up your bum. But then when you explained it that way, and you said that if it doesn't grow up to be uh, a big tree, go a beanstalk thing, I'm going to have to look up what beanstalk is, but it sounds quite impressive. And um, I guess it's a stalk made from a bean. And uh, you'll give me my cow back. And I guess it sounds like quite a good idea. Is it OK if I, if I phone my mum to find out if she's all right with it? No, we don't have time for such things. Besides, telephones don't exist yet. Oh, uh, I could Skype her. No, the internet doesn't exist either. Well, about smoke signals. You can't say that sticks haven't been invented. True, but we don't have time. I have things to be getting on with. Oh, all right then, says Jack and hands him over Milky White's halter and pockets the beans. Back goes Jack home. And as he hadn't gone very far, it wasn't dusk by the time he got to his door. What, back so soon, Jack? said his mother. I well, see you haven't got Milky White, so you sold her. How much did you get for her? You'll never guess, Mama, said Jack. No, I don't want to guess. I just want you to tell me. It's not a game. It's our livelihood. We haven't eaten for 14 years. I need to know. What did you get for our cow? We'll be living on milk. I just want to know what it feels like to have a bowel movement. Oh, okay, mother, 
Uh, everything, yes, yeah, it, it went really well. No, you don't say. Good boy. Uh, five pounds? Ten? Fifteen? No, come. You, did you get twenty pounds? I told you you couldn't guess. What do you say to these beans? Look, they're magical. Plant them overnight and you can... What did you say? said Jack's mother. Have you been such a fool, such a dolt, such an idiot as to give away my milky white, the best milker in the parish, and prime beef to boot for a set of pulty beans? Take that, and that, and ya! And as for your precious beans, here they go, out of the window, and now off for you to bed. And you're not having any milk either. Look if you haven't got any. Not a sup so you drink, and not a bit so you swallow this very night. So Jack went upstairs to his little room in the attic. And sad and sorry he was, to be sure. As much of his mother's sake, as much for his mother's sake, as for the loss of his supper. He started to realise that actions have consequences. At last, he dropped off to sleep, staring at the ceiling. And wondering if one day he'll ever be able to fly on a magic carpet. When he woke up, the room looked so funny. It really looked funny. The sun was shining into part of it, and yet all the rest was quite dark and shady. So Jack jumped up and dressed himself and went to the window. And what do you think he saw? Why, the beans his mother had thrown out of the window into the garden had sprung up into a big beanstalk, which went up and up and up up till it reached the sky. So the man spoke truth after all. I bet his mum's going to feel silly. The beanstalk grew up quite close past Jack's window. So all he had to do was to open it and give a jump onto the beanstalk which was made like a big plated ladder. Plated ladder. Like rope. So Jack climbed and he climbed and he climbed and he climbed. And he climbed, and he climbed, and he climbed, to last he reached the sky. And when he got there, he found a long, broad road going as straight as a dart. So he walked along and he walked along and he walked along till he came to a great big tall house and on the doorstep there was a great big tall woman who 
Good morning, Mum, says Jack, quite polite like. Could you be so kind as to give me some breakfast? For he hadn't had anything to eat, you know, the night before, and he was hungry as a hunter. It's breakfast you want, is it? said the big, great, big, tall woman. It's breakfast you'll be if you don't move off from here. You're going to be breakfast. My man is an ogre, and there's nothing he likes better than boys boiled on toast. You'd better be moving. You'd better be moving on, or he'll soon be coming. Oh, please, Mum, do give me something to eat, Mum. I've had nothing to eat since yesterday morning. Really and truly, Mum, said Jack. A bit oblivious to the actual realities of the situation. I may as well be broad as die of hunger. I don't think he was taking this very seriously. Well, the ogre's wife wasn't such a bad sort after all. So she took Jack into the kitchen and gave him a junk of bread and cheese. A jug of milk as well. Nice jug of milk. But Jack hadn't half finished these when thump, thump, thump. The whole house began to tremble with the noise of someone coming. Goodness gracious me, it's me old man, said the ogre's wife. What else should I do? Here, come quick and jump in here. And she bundled Jack into the oven just as the ogre came in. He was a big one, to be sure. At his belt he had three calves strung up by the heels and he unhooked them and threw them down on the table and said Here wife brought me a couple of these for breakfast ah uh, that that mm, lovely what's that I smell fee fi fi fum I smell the blood of an Englishman be he alive or be he dead I'll have his bones to grind my bread. Nonsense, dear, said his wife. You're dreaming. Or perhaps you smell the scraps of that little boy you liked so much for yesterday's dinner. Here, go, go you and have a wash and tidy up. And by the time you come back, your breakfast will be ready for you. So the ogre went off and Jack was just going to jump out of the oven and run off when the woman told him not, not to. She said, wait, wait till he's asleep, she said. He always has a snooze after breakfast. Well, the ogre had his breakfast and after that he goes to a big chest and takes out of it a couple of bags of gold and sits down counting them till at last his head began to nod and he began to snore till the whole house shook again with the snoring then Jack crept out on tiptoe from his oven and he was passing the ogre and as he was passing the ogre he, he took one of the bags of gold under his arm because he was a little stinking smelly thief and uh, yeah so from this point onwards anything bad that happens to him doesn't really matter does it <laughs> no so he stole the gold and off his pelters and off he pelters till he came to the beanstalk and then he threw down the bag of gold which of course fell into his mother's garden and then he climbed down and climbed down till at last he got home. 
And he told his mother and showed her the gold and said, Well, mother, wasn't I right about the beans? They are really magical, you see. And his mother said, uh, You little thief! What a horrible little smelly thief you are! You stole off that lovely ogre. And that lady, she gave you food, she, she gave you breakfast, she kept you safe from her husband, who was going to grind your bones up into, into, into stuff and eat you. And how did you repay her hospitality? You stole, you smelly little thief. Horrible, disgusting thief, stealing. Smelly little thief, smelly little thief. So they lived on the bag of gold for some time. But at last they came to the end of that. So Jack made up his mind to try his luck once more time, up at the top of the beanstalk. So one fine morning he caught up really early and got onto the beanstalk and he climbed. And he climbed, and he climbed, and he climbed, and he really, he climbed, and at last he got on the road again at the top of the beanstalk, and he came to the great big tall house he had been to before and stolen from them because he was a little smelly thief a little smelly thief uh, called Jack there sure enough was the great big tall woman standing on the doorstep good morning mum said Jack as bold as brass could you be so kind as to give me something to eat? Go away, my boy, said the big tall woman, or else my man will eat you up for breakfast. But aren't you the youngster who came here once before? Do you know that that very day my man missed one of his, his bags of gold? It's almost like it was stolen from a little, little smelly thief. A little smelly thief. That's strange, Mum, said Jack. I dare say I could tell you something about that, but I could tell you something about it, but I'm so hungry I can't speak till I've had something to eat. Well, the big tall woman was that curious that she took him in and gave him something to eat. But he had scarcely begun munching it as slowly as he could. For some reason he was he decided to eat really slowly. When thump, 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 they heard the giant's footstep and his wife hid Jack away in the oven again. Back in the oven. All happened as it did before. In came the ogre as he did before. Fee fi fo fum. He had his breakfast. The free broiled oxen. Then he said, Wife, bring me the hen that lays the golden eggs. So she brought it, and the ogre said, Lay! And it lay an egg. Probably out of fright, because it was, you know, it's just a normal chicken, really. Well, not normal chicken, because it laid golden eggs, but the ogre was pretty big. And, uh, and then the ogre began to nod his head, and to snore till the house shook. 
Shake, 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 shake. Shake, 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 shake. Then Jack crept out of the oven on tiptoe and caught hold of the golden hen and was off before you could say, Jack Robinson, smelly little thief, smelly little thief. But this time the hen gave a cackle which woke the ogre. Let's say this time the hen, like there was no hen last time. Like the hen gave a cackle this time, unlike the bag of gold. The bag of gold didn't give a cackle, didn't make a sound. Anyway, the hen started yelling. That's a hen cackling. And that waked up the ogre. And just as Jack got out of the house, he heard him call him. Wife, wife, what have you done with my golden hen? And the wife said, Why, my dear? But that was all Jack heard, for he rushed off to the beanstalk and climbed down like a house on fire. Because houses on fire are well known for their climbing abilities. And when he got home, he showed his mother the wonderful hen and said, Lay to it. And it laid a golden egg every time he said, Lay, 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 lay. Well, Jack was not content. And it wasn't very long before he determined to have another try at his luck up there at the top of the bean stalk. So one fine morning he got up early and went to the bean stalk and he climbed and he climbed and he climbed and he climbed till he got to the top. But this time he knew better than to go straight to the ogre's house. And when he got near it, he waited behind a bush till he saw the ogre's wife come out with a pail to get some water. And then he crept into the house and got into the copper. Not quite sure what the copper is. Uh, something made of metal, I suppose. Maybe it was the oven, like before, I'm not sure. He hadn't been there long when he heard thump, 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 as before. And in come the ogre and his wife. Fee fi fo fum, I smell the blood of an Englishman, cried the ogre. I smell him, wife, I do, I do, I smell him. Do you, my dearie, said the ogre's wife. Not a very good actress, I think she knew he was there. Then if it's that little rogue that stole your gold... And the hen that laid the golden eggs, he sure to have got into the oven. Like he did before. And they rushed to the oven, but Jack wasn't there. Luckily for him. And the ogre's wife said, Where are you again? There you are again with your fee fi fo fum we always going on about your fee fi fo fum Why why do you why? Why? What's the point? I mean you suddenly become a poet when you when you when you feel you smell something Why do you, no wonder no one dares fart near you. You start coming out with like lyrics 
Oh, we ain't got time for that. I mean, why, of course, it's the laddie you caught last night that... What? Why? Oh, I don't know. Uh, oh, yeah, it must be the, the laddie you caught last night, isn't it? That's what it is. That's what you're smelling. I lost track there. Too much ad-libbing. And I brought him for your breakfast. He's nice and broiled. How forgetful I am. And how careless you are. Not to tell the difference between a, li- a live un and a dead un. My cookie's not that bad, you know. You could do far worse than me. I never appreciate it. Why don't you ever buy me flowers? Huh? Just a thank you, now and then. Huh? You don't seem to appreciate me at all. I want marriage counselling. So the ogre sat down to the breakfast and ate it. But every now and then he would mutter. Well, I could have sworn... And he'd get up and search the larder and the cupboards and everything. Only luckily he didn't think of the copper. That copper. To this day no one knows what a copper is. But luckily Jack hid in it. After breakfast was over, the ogre called out. Wife, wife, bring me my golden harp. So she brought it, and she put it onto the table before him. And then he said, Sing. And the golden harp sang most beautifully. And it went on singing till the ogre fell asleep and commenced to snore like thunder, shaking the house. Then Jack lifted up the copper lid very quietly and got down like a mouse and crept on hands and knees till he got to the table when he got up and caught hold of the golden harp and dashed with it towards the door. But the harp called out quite loudly, Master! Master! And the ogre woke up just in time to see Jack running off with his harp. Jack ran as fast as he could, and the ogre came rushing after, and would soon have caught him. Only Jack had a start and dodged him a bit, and knew where he was going. He's been there quite a few times, hasn't he? You know, dirty little thief, dirty little thief. When he got to the beanstalk, the ogre was not more than 20 yards away when suddenly he saw Jack disappear. And he couldn't understand it. Where did the dirty little thief go? He's just disappeared. And when he got up to the end of the road, he saw Jack underneath climbing down for dear life. Well, the ogre didn't like trusting himself to such to such a ladder. I uh, didn't know if he could take his weight. And he stood and waited. So Jack got another start got further away but just then the harp cried out master master the ogre decided then ah I've had enough of this and the ogre swung himself down onto the beanstalk which shook with his weight 
Down climbs Jack, and after him climbed the ogre. By this time Jack had climbed down, and climbed down, and, you got it, he climbed down, till he was very nearly home. So he called out, Mother, mother, bring me an axe, bring me an axe. And his mother came rushing out with the axe in her hand. But when she came to the beanstalk, she stood stock still with fright. For there she saw the ogre just coming down below the clouds. But Jack jumped down and got hold of the axe and gave a chop at the beanstalk, which cut it half in two. The ogre felt the beanstalk shake and quiver, so he stopped to see what was the matter. Then Jack gave another chop with the axe, and the beanstalk was cut in two and began to topple over. Then the ogre fell down and broke his crown, and the beanstalk came toppling after. Then Jack showed his mother his golden harp. And what was showing that and selling the golden eggs, Jack and his mother became very rich. And he married a great princess and they lived happily ever after. But no matter what he did or what he achieved in his life, He's always going to be remembered. Always going to be remembered as Jack, a smelly little thief, a smelly little thief. The end. Now go to sleep. <laughs>